So as uh, I'm Yannick Brosseau, I'm going to talk to you about some transit stuff. So this is my neighborhood. I live in Montreal, um, in a neighborhood called uh, Verdun. I'm just a little bit far from the subway, so I often rely on buses to get anywhere else in the city. And like, uh, like most of Montreal, uh, all the streets are aligned in a well-designed grid, so it's really easy to pass a lot of bus lines. But from my places, even though I have access to five or six different bus lines to go connect me to the subway, I feel that there's times during the day where I don't have access to any buses. Like, there's a big black hole of no buses uh, from where I start. And I started wondering, like, is there a way to prove it? To I can do something to like, go to city council and say, as there's a problem in this part of the city. Luckily for me, a couple of years ago, I started helping a team uh, working on a tool called Transition, transition uh, to help uh, design a bus network. So I got a tool that might be able to help me. We'll see. So our goal with the tool is to make transit planning, a transit planning tool that is the best you can get for transit planners, but make it as easy so that anybody, any citizen, could take the tool and use it to analyze the transit network in their area. Um, if you look up my profile uh, at scale, you might have seen that my previous talk here was about the kernel and kernel of streaming and all the deployment process. So why am I here about to talk to you about uh, transit? So the story is like a couple of friends working on this tool. They asked me can uh, help us. And after I left uh, my previous job at Facebook, I was like, oh, maybe I can help you. We'll see. What do you need? And they start talking to me. Oh, we need to deploy the software to a bunch of partners. Okay, sure. How do you plan to do that? And they told me the, the, the horror story. Uh, we can just like start a bunch of VMs and like SCP the code there and SSH the config file and that's going to be it. And I got uh, really, really scared about that. So I'm like, okay, you need help. I'll come and start working with you despite uh, having to write some JavaScript code in the future. But luckily for me, I'm not, uh, I'm not a transit engineer. I don't know much about all the theory of it, but uh, I'm surrounded there in the uh, shared mobility. Uh, by a bunch of professional people like who study transit, uh, the PhD level stuff. And so the team is a really uh, a mix of like computer engineers, transit professional, and we also have like an economist who study like the impact of transit uh, in, in, the, in the diverse cities. So we are part of uh, L'Ecole Polytechnique de Montréal, which is an engineering school. Since we do research, we do apply research. Uh, over the years, we develop uh, various uh, different tools. Uh, first one called Evolution, which is a travel survey platform. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, we have a tool called Oscar, to be able to do a dashboard and uh, monitor the congestion in the city. Uh, similar to about uh, taxi dashboardings, you know, what's the uh, taxi usage in the city. And the tool I'm going to talk to you today, uh, Transition, which is all about doing the planning of uh, the mobility in a city. So I'm going to talk to you about what is transit planning, I'm going to go in more detail about the tool, what it does, how it's made. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the data source that you need to be do, able to do some transit planning. I might attempt a live demo. We'll see how our time goes and if it works. And I'll talk to you about some of the challenge about writing code in a research environment. So what is transit planning? Basically, the role of a transit planner is to start with the territory, a city, a region, and I do analysis of what's going on there, what's the population there, what's the need of mobility uh, of people. They're going to they're gonna study what's out there, what's the road network, what's the current bus network, uh, cycling path, uh, what people can use to, to go around. And they're going to, uh, after that, uh, formalize proposition about what, what can we do to improve, what will uh, reduce the impact, uh, the environmental impact, reduce your energy level, or just improve uh, the time spent of people moving around uh, in the area. Uh, they will do like cost estimate uh, about the, the construction of the, uh, of the network and also the operation, which if you have a bus network, the, the main cost will be the operation and not the construction. Uh, they're going to do like consultation, talk with the citizen, get their feedback. They're going to do like counting. They're going to do like see how much people are using it. Uh, and then they're going to like give suggestion to elected official uh, and follow up on the implementation of that. See if the new network uh, follow what, uh, what they were hoping for. And they're going to just start again, again and again just as an iterative process. Make sure you get uh, the best network.
people, the more uh, the better way. There's more and more people living in cities. Cars are getting bigger. Like obviously, moving people in cars in a city is the less efficient way you can do. Even if you electrify them and, and as a way to uh, solve the climate change, you still have the space problem in the city. So it's better to try to move people in a shared way, in a bus, in transit, in trains, uh, than having everybody ride in their own private vehicle. But I will try to convince us not to talk about transit, but uh, talk about how we plan the network. So far, our tool, instead of targeting only uh, the transit planner, uh, we want to target every kind of uh, users uh, of the network. First, the transit planner, they are the professional. If you're a big city, you probably have a bunch of people thinking about mobility in your city. But we want to make the tool available also to like a smaller organization. You might have a small town, a small regional organization who wants to figure out how to uh, improve mobility in the area, but they are not big enough to have like dedicated staff uh, of people uh, working on transit problems. So we want to make the tool uh, as good for people who have a bit of understanding or, or like a, uh, work for a city, for example, but not a full time in there. The third target that we have is uh, we want to, to make the tool so that elected officials themselves can go and uh, use the tool. Uh, we don't, they don't just have to like, get the report from Transit Planner and like, take decisions based on that. We often see a clash. Uh, we'll get a report, some, uh, some city will come ask us, like, oh, how can we improve transit? We tell them, like, oh, yeah, you should do that. And they're like, oh, that's complicated, or no, we cannot do that. Why? And they kind of second guess uh, the Transit Planner suggestion. So if we can get the tool in there and they can draw themselves the bus line and see the impact of adding a bus or removing a bus will be in the general mobility of uh, their citizen, we hope that we'll get the message better that we, there's a way to improve the network. And the second part, we want to make the tool like as good for uh, the citizens that who can go and like do it as themselves, propose new lines, and have like with all together with all those people, have some improve the governments of the city of the transit, and have like a, a more shared view and more shared proposition uh, for um, the network uh, in there. Like ultimately, we would love to have a tool like that, easy to play. Like if you have like I don't know, um, your favorite city simulation game and just draw a bus line in there. We are not there yet, but that would be like the ultimate end goal to have like as easy as a, a computer game. So let's have a quick look at what the tool does. So this is the, the main view of the tool. So we talk about transit, we talk about moving stuff around. So obviously the main view is gonna be uh, a map view of the area you're working in. I gave a similar talk earlier this year at FOSDEM, so this is the city of Brussels. I really like their bus network. It's all colorful, really shiny. It's really fun to, to see, so uh, I've kept that slide. So the main thing you're gonna do with the tool is like, obviously, is it your network? So you have a few options on top to like, add stops, add line, you can draw a line on your um, road network if you add buses, but if you add train, you can just draw land directly uh, where your train is going. Uh, you can obviously exit schedules. Uh, I'll show, I'll show the, the screen after that. Um, you can import and export your network. You can, instead of having to redraw your city network, you can just import uh, the, the GTS file that is provided and uh, do that, or you can even just export it. If you have like a small city, you don't have like fancy tool to uh, write GTFS, uh, you can use the tool, do a couple of lines, export as GTFS, and that can be imported to all the transit planning, uh, transit, uh, yeah, planning tool that the user can use. We also have the concept of variant, and that's probably the main uh, tool that is uh, important for transit planners to be able to compare different scenarios, different uh, networks. So basically with variant, you might draw your actual network and then you do a second variant that will, where you add new lines in your network and then you can do all, all the analysis comparing these two uh, scenarios or concept and see what will be better uh, in there. As I said, you can add schedules, so for every line you can compute schedule, or we can generate schedule for you. Uh, either you can specify a specific interval, I want bus every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, every half hour it will generate you a schedule, or you can also just specify uh, how many buses you have. You know you have 10 bus in your garage, or you have the budget for 10 bus, you can say, okay, I have 10 bus, I generate my schedule with this, and this is all the timing, and it will know like with the length of your uh, lines, how many bus you can operate in there. It's not a tool made to 
really follow the operation of your bus. It will not consider like how much brake you need to give your driver or how much maintenance you need to uh, to do that. There's other tools, other uh, really expensive tools uh, that does that. But if you're a really small operation, it will give you a good estimate. If you say a frequency for your bus, it will give you a, a, a quick overview of how much, how many buses you need. So it will give you maybe a quick, a quick cost estimate. But if you want to go like deep in the operation and manage your maintenance, we're, we are not aiming to do that, at least not for, uh, for the moment. So the first kind of analysis you're going to do, it's simple, uh, simple routing. Um, that's pretty similar to uh, all the, the routing tools, if you use Google Map or any kind of mapping software or any application on your phone. Um, you can specify the, the start point, the start time, overall time, uh, how much time you want to do uh, at most, uh, how much time you want to walk to get to the network, and obviously coordinate. Um, you can ask it to like, like give me the best result or give me all the different alternatives, and you can use uh, the data in there. The main thing that is interesting is it not just routing one route, that many tools that can do that, but we have like a batch operation uh, capability. So if we have like, multiple starting and end point, you can compute all of them in batch, and then you can do comparison. Uh, is your network better or not in there? So if you use that example, starting in LAX at 6 p.m. when I arrive to get to here, uh, this is uh, what we get that for here in LA. I didn't import all the network in LA. There's like, I don't know how many tra different transit agency. I just did three of them so far, just to, s yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So I did just, just, just three just to simplify my example. And there's a few artifacts. There's still some bugs, still a work in progress, like you see some extra line there. But basically, you, you'll get the information. You'll get a bunch of statistics uh, about, um, uh, your uh, your network, how, uh, how much time it took. Like for th this example, it takes uh, 136 minutes. So I decided to take a cab instead of taking the transit, sadly. Uh, all the length of it and how much time you spend like in transiting. For example, like you will have to, for this like, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, vehicle. You at least you don't wait only 25 minutes uh, between them. In this example, I, uh, I take the example of you as changing the variance. So I did a scenario where I decided to exclude all the uh, LA Metro rail network. Um, usually, I take the, the, other, the opposite example. I remove all the buses. Uh, but for this example, it was not possible. Like Usually, people will tend to stick to rail and ignore the buses. But for example, you might have maintenance to do on the line, and you want to see the, um, the impact of like where people will have to go or tell them, like. What's, the, what's going to be the time impact of uh, changing uh, this network? So basically, so I did that. Now it's only buses. Now you see it's uh, 168 minutes uh, if you exclude all the rail. So you can tell people, like, yeah, if there's no more train, um, it's going to take you about like, at least half an hour more. Um, the interesting part is like, so you actually wait less uh, between trains uh, or between vehicles if you just take the bus by about five minutes. But it's all a bunch of statistics, especially if you do that in a batch operation that you will get and give you an insight of what's good, what's better, uh, or what's worse in your, in your network, especially if you do that with all the points uh, in the city. The other main tool that the transit planner is going to use is what we call the uh, accessibility map. The idea here is you take a specific point, a specific starting point. Um, you can also do reverse accessibility map where you pick a specific destination. Um, and you compute the area that you can reach in a specific amount of time. Uh, in this example, I uh, have the, the different shade of blue. It's going to be the 20, 40, and 60 minutes uh, that you can reach uh, for, for the specific area here, starting point, uh, basically this place. Uh, and that gives you an area. And you have about, you have always statistics. Uh, so in 60 minutes, you can reach about 350 square kilometers um, of area. If you I did the same example with the other variant, removing trains. Uh, and then you see like, OK, you remove some impact, some, some reline in the network. This is the, the limited ability of people uh, can reach only like 210 square kilometers. And that's really a big like, useful tool. If you compute that for like all maybe major uh, population area, 
a new city for a specific network and then you add a new line or you change the frequency of a line, you're going to see that that, uh, that, read, that, test, that space that um, available to people uh, grow and reduce uh, accordingly. That's a really good indicator of like uh, the wellness of your network for your uh, citizen. I just wanted to uh, keep that example uh, for Bruxelles. Really tight network, as you've seen, so that gives you uh, a tight accessibility map. The third, the third tool that we have um, is a simulation and optimization uh, process. So basically, the idea here is um, using, as I said, a bunch of like uh, either like real uh, information about where people start and where people go. Or we can also just simulate that with, a, if you have a population model and some uh, a model for the place you can do, we can generate those trips. Um, and using a generic al algorithm, uh, we can improve your network by 5 to 10% in overall um, um, movement time. So we, can be, we are able to reduce by optimizing your network, uh, reduce like for about uh, the example we have, like for 5 to 10 minutes in general uh, in the study we, we've done. You see there in the graph, for most people will be improvement. Some people will might have uh, a little bit uh, worse using the algorithm, but in general, uh, will be an improvement. And it's hard to, to convince people that you add a new bus line or do change your bus line, but having a actual all data that is actually better for most people, uh, it's really useful uh, thing to have. So it's not just uh, in theory. Uh, we did a few studies for various cities. Uh, this is uh, Drummondville. It's a smallish city between Montreal and Quebec City, about like 80,000 people. And they came to us with their old, this is the old bus network that they have. There's a bunch of different lines uh, in there. And they were like, yeah, that doesn't, the city grew, there's more neighborhood, it doesn't respond to uh, the need of the population. Uh, can you do something? So basically, we came up with that, running the generic algorithm. And the, yeah, with the algorithm, you, you draw a bunch of lines either randomly or like with some indication, uh, and it will select their best one. We are working on algorithm to have that draw the line automatically, probably add some like machine learning in there, we'll see, uh, to put the proposition right now. You have need to have a human like go, go and draw a lot of lines and uh, the tool will, uh, will find the best way to, to do that. So they actually right now implementing this network. Um, we have a few issue with the uh, congestion. Uh, it's a small city, we didn't expect too much traffic, uh, but apparently they are getting a lot of problem with traffic and that impact the bus um, traffic, the, 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 all the bus get stuck in traffic and then the, the connection don't work as well as we expected, but um, we, that gave us some feedback to improve the tool uh, later on. Another example of that we, uh, we made with the tool, so we have this, uh, so this is a map of Montreal with the main uh, subway line. And in pink, a couple of years back, uh, there was a proposal to add this diagonal uh, new subway line uh, to the network to, uh, and to go cover like the middle part here where you have like the biggest population area in the city. And the, the, uh, they came to the lab asking us, will that improve? Like, that looks like, like a good idea, but will, what will be the impact uh, of, uh, of that line to uh, general uh, mobility? So we use the actual like transit survey uh, so we know what people move from where and go where in a typical day. And we were able to prove that, in general, having that diagonal line will save about 5% 5 of time for many users in there. And the biggest improvement will be people actually who are currently driving. Uh, this, they are the ones who get the most benefits in there. That's obvious because there's a big part on the top left where there's no much transit there. A lot of people drive. So if they are the opportunity to actually go a, a diagonal to go downtown, it will be uh, good. Uh, this isn't a map generated. It's not generated directly by the tool. We build, uh, the data is generated, and then we, it was mapped by uh, QGIS. QGIS uh, but it's some view that we might add uh, in the tool later on directly. Basically, by using, by mapping all the current projects in Montreal, there's a bunch of new uh, train line being added. Uh, so what will be the improvement for everybody? And we see on the map, every blue area is where people, there's um, uh, I forgot the key, but there's a significant improvement in their transit time, where in red there's no where there's no project, uh, there's no much change. So we see that the tool, like yeah, if you add more transit line, it will reduce uh, transit uh, time for people. So 
this is the main view, the main tool, um, the main thing that the tool does at this point. Let's have a look at uh, what, what does it run under the hood. Um, right now, it's, uh, it's a mostly a JavaScript application, web-based application, client, server. Uh, most of the code is in TypeScript. Uh, we have a few components in the back end in C++ and Rust. Uh, really hoping to migrate the most I can to Rust at this point. A um, lot of the code uh, was written by students. The master, PhD level, it's not the cleanest that we can have. So by rewriting some of it, we'll hopefully have uh, some stronger component. As I said, it's, uh, it's split into like uh, some back end, some front end, and some common uh, component in the, uh, at the JavaScript level. Uh, we develop a, a library with common component between all our software stacks, stuff that are like really common to all kind of transit analysis algorithm. Uh, we have a separate library, and we have like the, the application uh, stack in there. Uh, we use geographical data extensively, so we build the thing on uh, PostGIS and PostgreSQL to manage all this uh, geographical information. The basis of that routing is made with uh, OSRM, which is a pretty common tool to do routing on the uh, OpenStreetMap data. Um, it's written in C++. Uh, we use that for like route network, path, cycling path. Um, we are currently evaluating uh, switching into uh, there's a, a different tool called Valhalla, which might be more, more efficient in some of the specific use case uh, that we have. For the transit part, obviously, like the, the OSM do like a road network planning. Uh, for the routing path, uh, for the transit path, we develop our own tool called TR routing, simple name in there, where we implement the algorithm called the con connection scan algorithm. I will not go over in detail. I'm not sure I understand fully yet. Uh, basically, it's a really, really efficient way to, uh, to scan your whole uh, network and all the connection and figure out the best way to go from point A to point B uh, in there. Uh, recently, uh, especially at FOSDEM, we, we've met the team that make a tool called Motsis, which is really similar. Um, doing that, they also implement some similar algorithm. Uh, so we might consider like just switching to their tool. We'll see if it, if it works for us. Uh, we might just collaborate and instead of having to support all the code, uh, we could drop that part. Um, and use the other one. Otherwise, we'll continue to support it and I'll finish rewriting it for us at some point. So, having a tool is the first step. It's really interesting, but if you want to do anything useful, you'll need to have some uh, data to do the analysis, to do, to observe what's the planning, uh, what, what can, what's the impact of your uh, transit network in your city. So what do you need? You obviously need some kind of network, a road network, all the paths, cycling path in your city. You'll need a transit network, existing uh, bus lines. You'll need to know where you have population and where you have like destinations. And you, have, you need to connect those two, so basically generate trips uh, from source to destination uh, in there. The big question you're gonna have is, is that data available? And in the various, in the various open license, like open uh, the ODBL license used by OpenStreetMap, can you have some um, other Creative Commons uh, in there, or even public domain information? Like most these days, a lot of cities, a lot of uh, government provide the data in some kind of open license. And the good thing, we don't reshare the information. You use it to compute it, so you don't have to worry too much. As long as the data is available, you can use it uh, in there. Uh, in the U.S., interesting part is uh, most of the federal government data is uh, already in public domain, so you can use it without any issue. Uh, and just a quick note, like the, uh, the Creative Commons Zero was developed to uh, have a general definition that applies everywhere to, uh, to the world, because not every jurisdiction has a definition of public domain under copyright, so th there's now like a CC Zero that you can make sure when you release data, it's in public domain, you can do whatever you want with it. So, the good news is you can do about, about everything you need. You can find it in OpenStreetMap. Uh, there's uh, all the information there. Obviously, all the road and path network is there. And for most of the city, it's going to be good enough. Like, obviously, the quality varies from places to places. Uh, but these days, at least the road and path network is pretty good. And you can use it as a good uh, basis information. You're gonna have like a lot of uh, PUE point of interest, like shops, 
offices can be marked on the uh, OpenStreetMap, so you can use that to, to learn your activity center. And you can even extrapolate population, especially in an area where you have all the buildings. And if the buildings are ma marked correctly, if they are residential order, you can like basically have an idea of the population density and then use that to simulate your uh, progress around. But as I said, it's not the same quality everywhere. So you have to do some validation if you want to have a really good accuracy uh, in your results. Uh, we did a qu quick estimate in the most region we work with that it takes about 25, 25 hours per square kilometers to validate a urban area like Montreal or LA. If you go more to the suburb, it's gonna be, it takes us about 10 hours per square kilometers and maybe just one or two for a rural area. Um, the, the, the important part uh, that we, uh, we need to do um, to make sure that we correct the most often is make sure we have uh, the pedestrian and cycling path uh, and the link uh, together. And I, I put the example here of uh, uh, the conference center and uh, th this is an area where if you look at this area, you see some missing connection. Like this is the, the street, there's no sidewalk separated. That's one thing we do. We try to separate the sidewalk uh, from the road. And that I know that's a bit controversial sometime in the OpenStreetMap community. Why should that sidewalk separately? For us, it helps a lot because you can see like an actual distance difference between where the road is and where the sidewalk is. And if you have to, have to cross a big road, that can have like several, several meters, maybe like a minute to your whole transit area, the uh, transit time, so uh, it's there. And the connection here is really important. As you can see, like, if you want to go from this street to here, you cannot cross, there's no connection, so we don't know uh, to cross there. So the only connection is here. So to do it properly, we would probably add the, to uh, the sidewalk on front of the consent center and do the connection, or at least do a connection from this corner to the to the road. The other uh, big thing you're gonna do is add door to any big building. Same example here. Uh, if you just add the center of the building, it's hard to know where is the enter. And that will be really useful. Like if we drop you at the bottom of the coin center and the entrance is here, you have to go all around and then maybe you have taken a, a bus line that goes on this street instead of a bus line that goes on the bottom street. Uh, so we will add to, you, we need to add all the, if you want to have a better accuracy, all the entrance and this marker for that in OpenStreetMap. Uh, to add that. So that's the uh, other thing we do. Uh, we sometimes realign the streets, make sure the one way are there, uh, set the speed limit, maybe the street light that will have impact on the bus transit line. And especially like if you have like weird, um, strange configuration of street, really steep angle that some buses are pretty big vehicle and we cannot do all the turns. So we, we have to consider that in the routing algorithm. And as we are in the map, we try to make sure we add all the points of interest if you have any, uh, anything. So if you, have, if you want to uh, involve people uh, to help open soon up, one of the big things missing right now is all the, all the point of interest, all the shop offices, uh, something that's really easy to add. You, only, you don't need to add all the information about it. At least having the type and the name is good enough at least uh, for us. And we try for big buildings of the number of floor that can help with the uh, density uh, in there. Right now we do all of that by hand, but we want to like probably evolve We use like the tool like a task manager and map roulette to like divide the work. So if you have a specific city, if you have a community that you want to help, you can uh, target them with, uh, with those tools. So the second part is using the, uh, having the transit network and luckily these days, it's uh, pretty, pretty available. Most transit agency will share those. Uh, GTFS stands for General Transit Feed Specification. Used to be the Google Transit Feed Specification uh, when they got invented. It was a partnership between uh, Portland and Google. But now it got generalized, and uh, it's an open standard that is uh, created collaboratively by the, all the stakeholders. Uh, there's two variants, the schedule one, which is basically your statics map, and there's a real-time variant where you can know, uh, where you can share if, you, if the agency has uh, real-time information about where the vehicle are, they will share that in that format. The format is pretty simple. It's a zip file with a bunch of text file uh, with the basically comma-separated value uh, in there for every information, but this is an idea of like all the different information you have. Ad agency information, route trips, obviously schedules, Sometimes you're gonna have like fair information, so when you do the, the routing, you know what will be the cost for a specific user and you try to maybe reduce the cost uh, in there. 
as I said, you can find that. Most uh, Tunisian agencies have like a developer section these days where you can find uh, this information. So here at the bottom, you can see the link uh, in there. But not all of them have that as easy. I, I tried to find the one for the Pasadena Transit Agency. And the, there was just a link like, oh, email us, we'll send you the link. I'm like, OK, that's a bit annoying. Um, but with some luck, there's a website now called the Mobility Database that has about 2,000 uh, meta information about all the transit agencies. You will basically have a file for every transit agency with links and a direct link to where is their latest GTFS. So I'd, I could like get the Pasadena Transit just clicking the link, getting the file. I have a dream of uh, having that directly integrated in the tool. Uh, it's not there yet. Again, missing time, but basically the idea would be just, okay, I'm here, please download all the GTFS file from my area. Um, and we could easily do that automatically with all the meta information in uh, that uh, database. They are supposed to add an API to make that easily. There was a previous project called Transit Feed that kind of got abandoned, and now this one is the most uh, up to date. For the population, um, as I said, you can proxy the buildings if you have them in the print suite map. That will you like a good enough information, at least for transit planning. Uh, you don't need to count everybody. You just need to know how many people about come from air to there. Um, so that will give you a good uh, a good start for the simulation. Uh, we also use the land use uh, land use register. Basically, most government or region or state, uh, depending on the on the area, we have some kind of like register, public register of like who owns land or buildings, what's their purpose, uh, what's the value. So by just using that, and that's usually like really well geolocated because they need to do the land use of it. So you can use that as a proxy for, again, population. This is a residential area. What's the size of it? What's the value of it? How is there an apartment that can give you a good idea? You usually have all this information in there. So we can do that population. The other information that is widely available will be the census. But we have a lot of problem with that because the general area that we, you have is too big. Uh, if you have like a census, the, the smallest information will be maybe like a zip code in the US. Um, but that will encompass like several blocks in a city. And if you go like over three, four streets, you might have two or three different bus lines. And if you have one corner, corner of the area versus the other, if you want to take transit, you will have a completely different path. Um, we have students working on like kind of mapping uh, algorithm that, okay, let's take the census information, how many people are in a specific area and try to spread them in my, uh, in my streets to have in some way that makes sense depending on what's the street size or if I have any building and figure out a way to, uh, to do that. And it will also be really interesting to maybe anonymize some of this information so you can just, have, instead of having actual information, you can just take the, take the survey, you know you need to have a, that kind of population Let's generate one that match. For the destination, um, again, OpenStreetMap is probably the best one. Uh, if you have the information in there, uh, it's which is probably the, 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 the most missing information. There's not a lot of other source information. You could scrape some actual map, probably not the not following their uh, term of service, but you can try that or. If you still have uh, like old phone books that can uh, that will have like the yellow pages, we'll have some of the uh, shop information. But that's probably the, the part that is uh, the most lacking in the open uh, data information. Some city, some uh, region might have that available publicly, but it's uh, it's just really hard to keep up to date in there. Again, you don't need the exact information uh, for simulating the, uh, your network, but the most accurate you are, the most precise going to give you results. And connecting those two uh, is going to be trip. Um, this is the part that you will not find uh, in the open, but most transit agency will have that kind of information in general. Basically, every transit agency will do a survey once a year, once every three, four, five years, and they will basically ask their users where they come from. They're going to pick a specific week or specific day uh, and ask everybody in the network where did you come from? Where are you going? Why are you doing this trip? Are you going shopping, going working, going to school? And that will inform them in their planning decision in the future. They're going to do that either by sending by mail a survey like the census, calling them and asking them by phone, or even just like stopping them uh, on the, uh, on, uh, at the exit of the subway and uh, 
asking them, okay, where did you come from? Where are you going today? Uh, that's really time consumptive. We have the evolution platform that make a, a web-based tool to do that kind of survey, which basically like whatever survey platform you have, but really tailored for transit information. Uh, that's the evolution tool I uh, talked about uh, earlier. So I have some time, so I can probably attempt to see if I can make it work live for you. Let's see. So this is here. This is my mouse. OK. So basically, what I want to show you basically quickly is how we can use it to add uh, a new bus line in your uh, network. So this is like the, the, the line I have important. Like I said, uh, LA, the train, the bus, and the passenger transit. So if I want to add a new, like, let's just let's create an agency that will like do an express line from the airport to here, and that's the only thing they do. Uh, so basically, you create a new agency. You will give them, huh? <laughs> that's a good one. Linux transport. I need to have a short name. Let's do a color, something that is flashy. So that's my agency. I have a new one. Then I need to add new line. I could like uh, add new stops. Uh, I'll use the one that are existing on the map at this point. Uh, but basically, I'll click it here. Line. Yeah, adding a new line. Let's say this is the first line uh, here. And so then the next thing you have to do is line mode. Yeah. I need to tell it, uh, let's do just a bus line. Let's go simple. Like the difference between selecting bus or train, train will just ignore your road network. In bus, every time I click, it will attach the, the bus line to the network. So let's try to start somewhere near the airport. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here. Yeah. Uh, no, one line. Uh, I just, uh, here. Okay. Right here. Right here. Right here. It's a bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, it's Why it doesn't let me pick it? That's the fun part of doing a demo. It didn't let me pick it. So usually I just click on it and it works. So that's the fun of live demo. OK. So let's uh, skip that part. <laughs> so basically, the idea I uh, wanted to show you is to, I would have add that. So I would have create this line here. And if I click on it, things like the path. And basically, this is what I will you'll get. So this is I would have picked a stop here. Let's say I put a stop downtown and a stop here. And then I click like generate the reverse path. It will create the other uh, path in there. And then when you go to uh, routing here, uh, if I take the same route as before, I click here my scenario with the variant with a new line added uh, and just ask the route. And yes, it will take the most direct route that we just added there. And it's uh, slightly uh, faster than it used to be before. There's still some interconnection here to deal with, but so. Yeah, so uh, that's a, it, used, uh, it will use what your, it still use the other existing network, so if it can. Um, so that was the quick demo uh, in there. So it still works. Just a, a quick word I, I mentioned, like it's uh, it's coming from the research world. Uh, some people sometimes say, "Oh yeah, research code is bad." Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how do we make sure it works for for real? Uh, the main thing we do is we partner with actual transit agency. Right now, we have partnership with most transit agency around Montreal in the province of Quebec. 
So we actually developed the tool with them. So we, we basically, uh, real time, write the code, update. They have like live platform that can use and then they inform us like, oh yeah, we want to do that kind of uh, process, that kind of study and we, we meet with them uh, regularly to, and they can ask them, what kind of work do they do? And sometimes like, I will do that and we export the data and then we do that. And that's always like, what if you just give, can we give you maybe just a plugin for QGIS and you can just have the information directly instead of having export a CSV file and then doing a bunch of stuff with it. We're like, oh yeah, that would be great. It's not done yet, but it, it's on the high priority list. Um, the other thing that we, that the code quality with students, that's something difficult, like students will write a thesis, we write a paper, they want to do some quick, some prototype. It's sometimes hard to let them take the time to work with the open source project. So there's a lot of education to do with students to, okay, if you want to, your tool to be actually useful and some of them are really excited by that. Uh, okay, this is how the open source process work. This is how to do a PR and I, I, we know it's gonna take you some more time, but in the end, you're gonna have a um, better result and try to push like some, some research I tried to do uh, and we are part of them like, Yes, if you share paper, you share data, but you need to also share the code, and this is, we have all the code there, so uh, we try to push this idea like in the research world that you should be doing that. Uh, we did a few things before we opened the old code, we did a lot of cleanup around the, the converting most of the JavaScript to TypeScript, we found a lot of like unused variable, or we found variable that didn't exist anywhere that were used. Some part was not clear why it worked. Uh, there's a lot of dependency creep, especially if you prototype a small thing, you end up uh, import a dependency, like it's easy npm import and then you have something. So we try to make sure we clear up some of the dependencies uh, and we have a few pro research professionals in the, in the lab to, uh, to do that. It's obviously now open source. This is the GitHub status. There's uh, 450 issues still open. It's not all bugs. A lot of them are just new idea, but it's a it's a start pro, it's a start uh, uh, a work in progress. We're starting on it. Um, there's a lot of stuff we want to do, like especially in the ease of use uh, UI stuff, like just make things easier to do. A uh, lot of uh, performance improvement to do. Uh, like right now, see, if I imported all the data for LA, I think I would have like put my tool a little bit to a stall. Um, like Montreal is a bit the maximum size we have right now, but. We're gonna do improvement uh, as we go through. As for my initial problem, um, what I did, I did the accessibility map from my, uh, my, uh, my place and did a calculation, a batch calculation for every five minute uh, slot during the day. So from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for every uh, slot of five minutes. And this is all the dot that we have here. So I, I did plot what's the size of the accessibility area I have uh, during the day and you can see there's a few dips in there that kind of prove my theory of like, oh, there's a problem. And there's a big dip around 10.30 there that I, I reduced my uh, accessibility size from like 75 square kilometer to about 65. And that's like more than 10% drop. And that's kind of significant. So I'm not a transit scientist, but I see there's a problem there and like something to investigate uh, a bit more. So hopefully we'll prove that there's a problem and I can get better bus line in my area. Thank you. If you have any questions, I think we have a couple of minutes. I, I, sorry, I came in late. I didn't even know this was going, going on. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, so a, a question I had is, so effectively, and this is perhaps in, in regard to my coming in late, is this all, um, you know, an, an attempt to improve what exists for the routes and infrastructure that exists only? Or do you have uh, a component that, you know, looks at what exists, sees the suboptimality -optim of it, and has the ability to either input or track or, sp or project uh, costs that could be improved? Because in, in a lot of cases, particularly in America, less so in Europe and probably less so in Canada, you know, that's a very big, big problem, particularly things like uh, eminent domain and, you know, the, you know, rather spec spectacular costs that can be occurred, but ways to mitigate those. So we, we have, like I mentioned, we have an optimization component. Um, it doesn't do everything right now, especially automatically. 
for planning and building, but if you can just put your existing network and it will find optimization uh, and maybe even like remove route that doesn't useful or maybe like just change route, like okay, you can convert these two route by one and it's gonna be as efficient as before. It's in the tool right now. It's only accessible in the CLI. We are working on adding a UI uh, on top of that, but it's something that is like in the core. It needs improvement. Uh, it needs maybe more intelligence into it, but it's something that is is in there. The questions? Couple. On a similar theme. Um, does the tool have functionality for looking at trade-offs like we're taking away a lane of the road to put in train tracks? Hmm. That's, a, that's a really good question. And it's really like the, the, there's like always the question like, can you do dedicated bus line and uh, what's going to be the impact? Uh, we don't do that, but that's a really good idea. And patches are welcome. <laughs> I think you'll be the last question. So I just found out about a cool project that one of the uh, bus agencies in the Bay Area is doing with the uh, California Department of Transportation, and that is transit signal priority, where the bus generally gets a green light, and cars that would be turning in front of the bus get a red light. Yeah. Um, is that supported? And if so, how much difference does it make? That's, uh, that's not something that is in the tool. Uh, and that would need to improve the routing algorithm. Uh, I, I don't know the detail. I know it does improve uh, bus, uh, bus latency because the bunching of the bus behind and uh, at the light, that's a big problem. I would, I, I would have to ask my colleague who are the transit professional what's the actual impact. It's not something we have in the tool. Um, I don't think we consider that when you do the, the bus routing, how much time it is we've improved, but uh, something definitely to put in the to-do list. Yeah, so this will be a comment and then maybe we'll turn into a question, but um, I, I used to work for a transportation startup and I know like related to the question, like if you take away like a lane of the road and you replace it with the train, like what are the pros, cons? And like for our like startup, we were looking at like, you know, for the tentative like vehicle that we would have had, you're looking at like the headway between like the vehicles that you need to maintain which ultimately feeds into like the throughput. So, you know, I guess I, I walked in a little late, but is, is that something you could potentially like add to your tool, like looking at like the headway of either the vehicles or, you know, trains, and then ultimately being able to use that to compare like throughputs. And when I say throughputs, like there's vehicle throughputs, and then there's also like passengers on board, like total throughput, just things to, consider? I don't know if there's... Um, I think we have some of that. Uh, obviously, you can put different frequencies and like different uh, pacing of your vehicle. Um, we don't do comparison between like, especially like car vehicle at this moment versus like buses or the capacity. Um, we can do, especially when you do the simulation, uh, we can do like load uh, simulation and you know like, okay, you need that. I mean, you know how many people per time per vehicle is gonna uh, be in your vehicle, uh, but I don't think we go as deep as the analysis that you are uh, talking about. But yeah, we have a lot of ideas uh, to improve, and hopefully, at some point, get more people involved. Especially if there's many transit agency. The idea here is to there's other commercial tools that do that, but. Obviously, we, uh, we prefer to do it in open source and be able to collaborate with research and get, bring new ideas and get agency that have tools that really respond to their need and like do the analysis uh, that people think or the, the people can invent new new way to think about transit. And we love to incorporate that and share that around. I know there, there are a few more questions, but uh, we have 10 minutes to transition the room to the next speaker who's going to be talking about scraping legislative data, um, which as a topic near and dear to my heart, and she's coming from the Open States Project. Um, so we can take maybe, I think we have one or two questions, but we really do need to transition the room. So um, you're good? You want, is that, I, you want a question or are you waving me off? No, I, I'm, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise I'm still here after the, after the talks if you I cannot answer yours. Yeah, so uh, that is very interesting. Um, I've, um, you know, sometimes when I travel, right, I would use sites like uh, sigalert.com or maybe trafficpredict.com, right? And so 
I'm wondering, like, in terms of the, you know, the real-time update, right, mm -hmm. of, of traffic information, how often does this site get updated? Like, if I look right now, what is that based off of a, the snapshot of traffic, like, 15 minutes ago, an hour ago, or what? Yeah, I think the uh, the actual like congestion information is really really hard to do. It's really hard to consider. Uh, there's not a lot of open source of information about congestion. Uh, we have access to some with some partnership with like transportation agency and that kind of stuff. But they, it's hard to consider. And it's it's one of the weakness of like doing analysis based on schedules. You sometimes don't. Um, consider the congestion. One thing we might want to do is to use explicitly the when, where we have the GTFS real-time information, compare that to schedule, and then we know, okay, for this city, the, the, the line number six is always off, and do better uh, analysis based on actual real-time information versus the uh, schedule one. But it's, it's a difficult problem uh, to consider. Last question. Yeah, so um, I actually have a lot of friends that are software engineers at, at LA Metro. One of the main um, uh, softwares that they use is a closed source software called Remix. Um, and so I, I think they'd be quite interested in, in this. The primary thing that Remix allows is um, A, integration with um, very big batch data, um, census data, and B, the cost estimation. Um, um, if there if that feature doesn't exist, I might might start working on it on your repo. Actually, is there um, is that on your timeline or roadmap to I integrate that kind of cost estimation for running the line? Uh, I think there's we there's always some bit of it, but yeah, it definitely needs to be improved uh, in there. But that's definitely something that would be inter interesting to have. We we don't aim to be exact in cost estimate. As I said, there's other tools that does that better. But something it's one thing that cities ask us like, okay, how much is gonna cost us? And we're like, okay, and then we do some basic outside computation, but uh, it's something that uh, should be integrated at least in some way. And But we can do like bridge back, we do a lot of batch processing with the census information, so that part at least should be covered. Thank you right, very well, much. Thank you very much.